I'm inspired. I'm inspired. Hey there, guys. How's it going? My name is Suman Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy, and I'm a flow state coach, which means that I help you feel better and perform better. Today, I'm going to be talking about the flow state characters that really helped me while I was growing up. Okay. Now, this is going to take some reflection, so as I get new ideas, I'll probably let you guys know. However, this is what is coming up for me right now. The first character that I want to tribute this video to is Calvin, okay? Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. If you see up there, I have my stuffed toy tiger named Timbo, okay? And I got him when I was 10 years old, okay? I remember very specifically I was in Thailand at the time. And I was drawn towards getting this tiger because of Calvin and his wide array of imagination that he could tap into. I think because he had such a complex vocabulary, it definitely helped me to access my verbiage and my linguistics growing up. As I started to read more Calvin and Hobbes, I started to notice, hey, this is an adult comic. You know, he's speaking in terms and... You know, I learned new words and vocabulary from reading that comic book, and that really helps me also get a keen sense of my own imagination. Like, he would constantly be in school, and like, his teachers would, you know, change it to aliens, he would create different things out of a cardboard box. You know, he would do all of the things that made a child tap into that curiosity, that wonder, and that fantasy world that he created through Spaceman Spiff and so many other incredible characters, you know, that he came across and, you know, interacting with, you know, little um, Susie or, I don't know if it, her name was Little Susie. Yeah, I think it's Susie, right? Um, reminds me kind of like of that little Susie from, I think it was uh, Johnny Bravo, right, as well. It's called Little Susie, which is funny. So anyway, that character is powerful, Calvin is powerful, Hobbes is powerful, you know, just because of what they represent. Second, I remember not really seeing any masculine role models growing up much. I know that's sad to say, but I honestly didn't have many people that I looked up to. I remember uh, I had Elliot Hulse to be one of the people that I watched on YouTube, as well as... I had him on a podcast in 2017, which was an awesome experience. And speaking of that, you know, when I look at TV and movies, I don't see Indian superheroes or Indian mythical strong characters, you know. Of course, the Mahabharata, but I never really grew up watching that. However, there was this comic book. There was this cartoon called Phantom, okay? There's this purple guy, you know, he, is this, he looks kind of weird, right? He looks kind of like an alien from another planet, but... Basically, he's in the safaris in the jungle. I believe it was an Indian character, as far as I know. I'm very drawn to the sadhu right now. I mean, another graphic novel, which is an incredible representation of this powerful character. But if you take a look at Phantom, he had this ring, right? He had this ring, and whenever you punch the bad guys, it would leave an imprint of that skull ring on their face, right? And so this was just a perfect, like, understanding that I got from it of, like, I've got to leave my mark, I've got to leave my legacy in the world, whatever I do, I'm fighting crime. I'm not necessarily fighting crime, though, in a sense I am, you know, fighting the, the dark forces of the world, you could say, through my coaching and through my consulting. Um, but at the same time, just that leaving of that mark, like, leaving that legacy was a very important theme for me after... You know, understanding the concept behind that comic book. Of course, I loved Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, you know, all these different cartoons. There's, there's way too many to name here. Uh, however, specifically focused on flow, you know, if you're thinking gamma waves, you would think of Dexter, Boy Genius, Jimmy Neutron, you know, these very, very smart intellectual characters like the brain from Pinky and the Brain, right? Um, very smart characters I've always been drawn to, like uh, Doctor Strange, for instance, is an incredible character. I have a list of characters up there as well near my mirror, if you notice that. There's Vivekananda, there is Horace, there is uh, Osmosis Jones, Bruce Lee, Tony Robbins, Larry Ellison, Space Dandy, and Doctor Strange, okay? Now, these are very recent encounters, and 
but let's see. If I'm going back to my childhood, what did I used to really be interested by? I have to state here that I love The Simpsons. I love The Simpsons voices, and I would constantly mimic those voices on the regular, specifically because they talked about a lot of different themes that it just introduced me to American culture and just the understanding of. They, they talk about so many references and pop culture and so many things that it just made me very well referenced and it got me into the flow state of processing different information at once. You know, that, that feeling of like taking all the data and just integrating, right? So The Simpsons really helped me do that. Because there's so many episodes, and of course it is funny, but if you really look into the episodes, there is a strong moral element, strong entertainment element, and they're informing you about something. Now, we talk about predictive programming and stuff. Uh, I'm sure there's something going on in regards to that. And The Simpsons, there's way too many synchronicities, coincidences, you know, things that they predicted. So there's also something very powerful there in terms of how they're tapping into that flow state. Um, and who knows what's going on there, right? I was never really super into anime until much later in my life. However, I did watch a few, like, of course, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, and all. I liked the cartoons that combined two different polarities together. Okay, so if you had Dexter and Dee Dee together, right, they're two polarities. Uh, cat dog, which are two polarities, like, stuck to one body, right? Um, that is the flow, right? The, these two opposing poles coming and finding the sweet spot, the midpoint between both of those, right? I loved Cat Dog, man, if you guys ever remember that show. It's a very powerful show. I also loved, loved, loved Sheep in the Big City. I don't know if you guys remember this, but they had so many little inside jokes and hilarious references to things, like the oxymoron and, like, just this sheep-powered ray gun that they're creating. Like, it's just the bizarreness and absurdity of that show and, you know, the, just the characters, it had this very mockumentary approach, right? It's very funny and just, it was able to make you really start to think about the world. Like, what's really going on, right? Like, these generals are, like, chasing down the sheep and the farm. Like, this is, this is wild, right? This is what's really going on here. What is really going on here, right? And so it got me to question, like, conspiracies and things like that. I feel like that show made me very inquisitive about things in the world and like it made me laugh obviously and it also made me just see things like from different cultures I know this sounds weird to say but I know there's this like there's a, like the Swedish character in there and like they're not afraid of stretching the stereotypes and boundaries on that show right that they're just completely like they're able to skirt on the edges of Taboo, similarly to like South Park or Big Mouth or any of these shows which definitely stretch the boundaries of like what is acceptable, what is PC, what is quote-unquote, you know, a Taboo. So I think that that rebellious nature inside of me was always there, so I would watch um, certain shows like that. Of course there's Captain Planet, you know, he's a hero. Speaking of flow state, rocket power, okay? Rocket power the Jetsons, okay? The Jetsons, because of its advantage of looking at the future, and Futurama also does this very well, but the Jetsons, what they've done is, they've really been able to see that family dynamic and actually lead this life with, a, like, a dog and a robo-butler and, like, just these different elements that make it very easy for you to grasp these imaginative and imaginative bizarre concepts of like going around the zipping around the galaxy these flying cars right and uh, rocket power or not team rocket okay don't get me wrong rocket power was an incredible show okay about these well i believe that one was like a roller skater and one was like a skateboarder right they each had their own thing as far as i remember but I do remember that show being very powerful, specifically Otto was a very empowering character for me as I watched him, you know. It really made me love the show. And I do remember I, I had a nickname once called Twister. My, my cousin sister can attest to this. Uh, she was called Judy from the Jetsons. And I was called Twister from Rocket Power. Now, 
who also named one more of my cousins Pebble, um, Pebbles from uh, Flintstones, right? The, the baby girl from there. So me and my cousins, you know, we've constantly been watching Cartoon Network. You can just tell through our language, through our experiences, through the memories that we've had that cartoons were a huge aspect in my life, their lives, you know, and many people's lives, you know, growing up. The, the cartoons kids are watching are very weird, like Uncle Grandpa and these shows, they're like, whoa, they're way too trippy bizarre things going on here like chowder like are you guys kidding me like the, these shows are like absolutely like bizarre like they don't have a plot they're kind of just like you know little jokes here and there and yes I, I do respect these shows I'll have to say Uncle Grandpa's awesome like you know they, it has a moral in the end and things like that but just like this you know flying realistic tiger and like just this, this swamp monster character like it's just like certain shows are just very family guy generator oriented you know they just kind of like have randomizer and they just press a button and just kind of gives you a, pops you out a show but I don't think those shows are going to tap you into the flow state unless you're looking at you know very empowering characters like He-Man I remember was a very empowering character for me um, I don't know. I don't know if you remember that show called SWAT Cats. Um, I remember that show being very powerful and masculine as well, in a sense. Nowadays, we have these shows like that are very, very like. I don't know. You know, like SpongeBob is a great show, but then, then again, I don't really want to aspire to be SpongeBob. You know what I mean? But yeah, edit project. Like, I, I don't think I want to be that. I don't want to be Patrick either, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't want to be Mr. Krabs. Money, money, money. Who wants to be Patrick? Yeah, hey, SpongeBob. Like, who wants to be these guys? You know what I mean? Like, maybe 1% Sandy, you know what I mean? Or one of the other characters, but even then it's like... Some of these shows, you don't really relate to any of these characters. I mean, they're entertaining, don't get me wrong. But to be inspired by that as a young male or uh, just a young person in general, like, it is going to transform you. Like, some of these shows are going to transform you. And some of these shows are just going to entertain you and keep you in the fluffy clouds, right? And stereotypes can be used for good or they can be used to distract and toxify people's minds, right? And I think the argument that parents have is like, cartoons are going to rot your brain. Well, that's not very true. In fact, I think cartoons expanded my mind. Okay, they did the complete opposite. But it's up to you what exactly cartoons that you're watching. Okay? Because if you watch something very deep and profound, like an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! or, you know, card captors for that matter, you might reach an epiphany point where you're like, whoa, hey, wait a minute. I watched Naruto and I, and I realized something about my life. You know, I watched Angry Beavers and I got to understand something about the human condition or something, you know? Like, there's certain shows that if you look into them, they're going to get you and tap you into your flow. So it's up to you to do a little bit of nostalgic trip down memory lane to look at what, what were the shows that I watched when I was growing up and really ask yourself and find what elements of that really started to crystallize your identity and your, your patterns of your ego, right? Because that is really going to be a monumental deep dive into your own consciousness. And as you recognize this, as you find the examples, as you see like, oh yeah, I grew up watching Disney princesses and that comes into this aspect of my personality, wanting romance and love and I'm a hopeless romantic. And oh, you saw the link there. Good. This is what we're about. Okay? This is why this kind of exploration is so crucial and so important for inner child healing, for, you know, self-awareness, for self-actualization. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed my perspective. Have an amazing day. May the flow be with you and stay legendary. I'll see you next time.